I'm Megan Kelly, and we begin this morning with a new documentary series shining a light on fatal police encounters. Encounters that have sparked numerous protests and calls for change around this country. The objective, the filmmakers say, is to spark a meaningful conversation. Now, the first episode focuses on the 2014 death of Eric Garner right here in New York. And we do want to warn you, you may find some of this video disturbing. Those were Eric Garner's last words, repeated 11 times as he was placed in what the medical examiner said was a chokehold by New York City police officer Daniel Pantaleo. On July 17, 2014, police say they approached the 43-year-old on Staten Island for allegedly selling loose, untaxed cigarettes, a low-level crime. Garner denied the allegation and refused to be detained. I didn't sell anything! Later that day, Garner was pronounced dead at the hospital. Shocking eyewitness cell phone video of the incident went viral, and Garner's name became synonymous with a nationwide movement protesting police brutality and discrimination. Protesters questioned the tactic used by Pantaleo to physically restrain Garner. Chokeholds are widely seen as excessive and have been banned by the NYPD since 1993. But the president of the NYPD Sergeants Union says the officer did not perform a chokehold. What Officer Pantillo appeared to be trying to get to happen was a seatbelt maneuver. I was trained to do a chokehold. That was not a chokehold. The seatbelt maneuver is very similar, but does not block the carotid artery. The city medical examiner determined that Garner died from compression of the neck, which caused asphyxiation. In December of 2014, a grand jury declined to bring criminal charges against Officer Pantaleo, who said he never intended to harm Garner. The officer later issued an apology to the Garner family for Eric's death. Garner's wife told Today, The time for condolence would have been when my husband was gasping for air, asking them to let him breathe. Hmm. Two Sides looks at four high-profile cases from the perspective of both the victim's family and law enforcement. With me now in studio, Eric Garner's mom, Gwen Carr, along with Julius Tennant, who's the executive producer of Two Sides. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to start with this. I, I watched the episode on Eric Garner, and Julius, well done. Because you. when you say Two Sides, you mean it. It was fair. It gave both perspectives, and it really made you feel something. It made you yes. understand yes. the pain that you went through and how these kinds of cases can spin so quickly, can spin so quickly out of control. So let me ask you to first just tell us about Eric. Tell us about Eric and what kind of guy he was. Well, um, my son, he was a very, very gentle, a very caring person. He would always try to help someone. Uh, no matter who they were. Uh, I know he was also a lover of Christmas, which that probably comes from me because when my children were young, I used to go all out for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that grew up in him. We always had family over or we went over to family's house. And it was just such a, a great time for me. So what the, what the documentary sets up well, because those of us watching this from our post didn't realize the history before we got to that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric had been arrested before, but the, the police had been really targeting him. Yes. With, like, taking money from him uh, just on the street, saying, how much money do you have and taking it? This is what's alleged in the piece. And so there was a backstory to sort of the tension yes. that preceded... Because you could see how fed up he was when they stopped him. He was mm -hmm. like, I wasn't doing anything. That, you know, mm -hmm. that I wasn't selling cigarettes here. Right. Um, they, they, of course, just say, well, either way, you can't, you can't... You have to submit when we come and slap the cuffs on you. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that, Gwen? But, you know, that day, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He had just broken up a fight. And they bypassed that to come and harass him. And as he said, I guess he was just fed up that day because they had been targeting him all the while. As he walked down the street, they would pat him down, take his money. They didn't voucher it. 
Now, they were committing crimes right there themselves, but they're not accountable for that. They don't stand accountable you, for that. You talk about that in, in the piece mm -hmm. and about how um, there were complaints raised about it. Mm -hmm. And and Mayor de Blasio comes under fire as well because the cops' position as, as evidence in the piece is, look, none of us is proud about how the Eric Garner case was handled, but we were out there giving the guy a hard time about selling so-called loose cigarettes, untaxed right. cigarettes, because that's what the mayor told us to do. What do you, what do you make right. of that, Julius? Well, I mean, I, listen, I mean, it, it became a law. It was what it was. But that day, Eric wasn't doing anything. He wasn't selling any cigarettes. He wasn't. I mean, but the fact that he had been targeted obviously made them kind of get more on a hyper alert because he was in that area again. But did that give them the right to take him down like that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. We outlined in that setup piece that, mm. you know, th there was a dispute over whether it was a chokehold or it was a seatbelt. Does any of it matter? Does it matter what the name of the hold was? And no, it doesn't. My son is still just as dead. Because, and it was a chokehold. It was ruled a homicide. By the um, medical examiner. By the medical. That we had two medical examiners. We even had a police forensic examiner that ruled it a homicide. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why there was no indictment. Mm -hmm. They, the officer went and defended himself before the grand jury. He testified, which is dicey for a cop to do it, but they do it in a lot of these cases because it helps them nine times out of ten. And his position was there was no intent to harm. There was no intent no. to harm. I really think it was the DA who sabotaged the grand jury because it was said, first of all, there was a secret grand jury. We had no idea when the grand jury was being held when they convened, and the next thing we knew, it was over with, and they said there was no indictment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know my brother-in-law, he went to the grand... He was asked to testify in front of the grand jury, and from what he told us, he said he was in there all the five minutes, and the grand jury, like I thought, they wasn't supposed to have their cell phones or reading a paper. He said... He had people that was just, like, unattentive mm -hmm. to what he was saying. And, you know, it was two people who I had met who was on that grand jury who says they had already had their mind made up, I guess, according to what the DA had told them or had conveyed to them. There were two, two ways this played out, criminally, and the officers were not indicted, and then civilly. And you received a $4 million wrongful death settlement from the city. Well, I didn't. Um, the family, Eric's... Uh, his, wife his wife and his kids did. I didn't receive anything. Your thoughts on... To me, that struck me as so ironic because here's the city, you know, the mayor trying to crack down on the loose cigarette sales because mm -hmm. they want the tax money. You mm -hmm. point that out in yes. the piece. They want the taxes from the cigarettes. How much money would they have made on taxes from the cigarettes, right? Well, and now they've got to shell out $4 million. I mean, just from a business perspective, does it make sense? Because that's how these politicians think. Right? Yeah. Does it make sense for me from a business or a political standpoint? On every level, this is controversial. Right. Every level. And it, it makes no sense also because they're talking about untaxed cigarettes. The cigarettes were taxed. In the states he bought them in, he paid tax on the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. When he went to Virginia, when he went to Delaware and bought the cigarettes, they were taxed. <laughs> How are you doing now? Because I know that the episode was dedicated to the memory of Eric's daughter, Erica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who was an activist herself. She died yes. in December of a heart attack. How are, you, how are you coping? How's the family coping with that? Well, I'm still in disbelief. Uh, for her to go at such an early age, I, I, I just think I'm going to wake up because it just doesn't seem real to me. Mm. You know, it just doesn't. I want to tell the audience that we, of course, reached out to the NYPD for a statement. They... They gave us this, quote, as we have said many times before, the NYPD's internal disciplinary process has been placed on hold at the request of the Department of Justice. And that's because the DOJ was supposed to be looking into this case, although there's a question about where that stands now under attorney sessions, uh, given the shift in administrations and the prioritization uh, each places. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.